Hey everyone, it's been a while. My last video I released in July, four months before my webcomic Beyond the Still Wall was set to launch. I was doing art studies, creating my world map for the story, and just practicing drawing the characters in art. And then I reached a point where I felt I had nothing interesting to say. Hell, I don't even know if it was interesting or not. My videos don't really get many comments, and at that point I would even have taken hate comments just to see where I was or what I was doing right or wrong. I was creating content thrown out into a silent abyss. And since my channel's too new, small, and not, even YouTube couldn't give me much for analytics. It burnt me out, I guess. I'm new to social media, and in combination of my life this year offline, my batteries just ran out. But enough of that. I'll have another video later breaking down my thoughts of one year on social media and what I learned from it. And as for what we're seeing me draw right here, this is page one and page two of my webcomic Beyond the Still Wall. That being said, the webcomic had a successful launch and I've been having a new page every week. This is a victory for me, as I was not sure how much time it would take me to make a page each week, especially combating my ADHD to keep things on schedule. Even with my webcomic and Patreon being timely, I still lose a couple hours each day to being easily distracted. I'm all done with the 10 storyboards and thumbnails I created from the script. And even better yet, the more pages I drew, the better I started to understand the flow I wanted to achieve, and was able to axe two pages from the 10. That means better flow and more story for my dear readers. When I went face first into page one, I had no idea how to do any of it. I've read manga, manhwa, comics, webcomics, and I've seen their layouts, but now that I'm actually creating layouts myself, I'm able to look at them with a more analytical eye. How did they achieve their flow? Pacing? Leading the eyes from one panel to the next? And the correct one? What did they do to make it visible and easy to read for the reader? All of these subjects now were loud any time I wanted to analyze a comic page I enjoyed. Seeing what I wanted to do and executing it was a whole nother battleground. Backgrounds. I've never really done or bothered with backgrounds. I was mostly interested in drawing characters, so now my first panels are in a dark forest. It was tricky to draw darkness. Thankfully, I had the flashing lightning to help cast the shapes, and the time was set at dawn, so it would get lighter and lighter as the pages progressed. Figuring out how to render the trees, the grass, the branches, and the leaves with the brushes I had, the results to me were muddy. Which, by page two, I had snagged a forest texture pack from Devon Ella Kurtz. Probably mangled that a little bit. Their packs are free or pay what you want, and I'll link them below. It's a lot of brushes, so if you can, I would pay what you can. It's a very good pack, and it helped my sanity a whole bunch. I can definitely feel the first page. How long it took me to make that background, and even with all the time I put into it, it still felt okay. I am intentionally accepting what I would consider okay acceptable because one, what is okay to me is probably still impressive to someone out there. Two, I'd spend hours overworking it to little to no effect. Three, I know as time goes on, I will get better either by repetition, more art studies, once I feel those weaknesses or both. And each page has gotten better in my opinion. After each page was completed, I would look at it the next day, go over my thoughts, what worked, what did not work, which parts and processes were reaching towards my desired style. I am slowly learning and telling myself the story and effect has much more value now than how detailed a page is. I could texture every pebble in the background that a majority would never even notice. But if the page is bad, it's just bad. If the action is weak, if the story is not properly conveyed, all of that work is meaningless. Just a note, if you are enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and comment to let me know what you like about it. And if you subscribe with the little bell, you'll be notified of new videos and shorts. It really helps out my channel and it lets me know what I'm doing right or wrong. To continue, as I'm learning all of this as I go through observation, research, reflection, and study, I bet it would be fun to have taken classes or college for these subjects. I'd probably be in a better spot, but I live in the US, so that's a big no for me. I'd rather buy books and watch videos when my attention span allows. With each page, I have been experimenting with brushes and rendering. 
If you look at the pages in order on my website, you can see the progression and change of line art, coloring, and texture. And I have a specific style in mind, and the more I practice, the closer I get. I've accepted a mixture of cell shading and some painterly bits at this point in time. If I pull up this picture of Thrawn on the cover, I really, really liked how he turned out. Is it mega rendered? No. Painterly? Kinda. But not really. Does it look nice for a comic? Yes. I am a person who gets stuck with logic and detail very often. This also interferes with my work at times for both writing and art. Over the years, I have found out it is very important to grasp that balance of realism and fantasy for me. You want enough reality to give the reader familiarity and grounding in that world, but just enough where your cool ideas and fantastical systems are easily understood and enjoyed. To give them just enough so the rest is the escape most of us love seeing and reading. I want to translate this to the storytelling in my art as well. One thing I really love about Eastern anime and manga is that the art can change depending on the mood, intensity, etc. You will see DreamWorks adopt this very often with their color themes for scenes and moods. The sudden lighting change may not make logical sense at the moment, but the mood comes out loud and clear. You can feel the tension, or the security, based on the coloring and rendering of the scene. I intend to push myself towards this, as it seems flat out fun. I also know some webcomic artists will come back and redraw their first few pages to match their current skill. I plan to leave them as is, because one thing I loved to do was to see the first page and latest page of a webcomic artist's work and to see how far they've come, and it inspires me too. I hope I can provide that for others in the future as well and let them know we will always continue to improve and grow. As you can see in the second page, I've swapped my brushes and the page looks much cleaner and clearer than the first. I did not stick with this line art brush, but I am dabbling with line art brushes to find that good mix of textured, clean line, and soft strokes. Which I think I'm finally narrowing it down, but I may end up with two line art brushes. My stubborn self wanted to just have a line art brush and a painting brush, but art doesn't work like that. We have to change our tools for textures and effects. Digital is no different. If you're curious, Beyond the Still Wall is a dark fantasy graphic novel with romance, action, and suspense. Each of the main characters will have their own goals, ambitions, and character growth throughout the story. Keep in mind, this is a mature webcomic as there is combat and character relations. BeyondTheStillWall.com is where you can read up to page 8 as of this recording and see how quickly my pages improved over time. There are character biographies and even a world map too. For more behind the scenes, progress pictures of my content and thought process, visit my Patreon for that and reading the comic pages as soon as I finish them. If you like this video and want to see more, like, comment, and subscribe so I can see you again. Thanks for watching! I hope you have a lovely day!